Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sport the Aussie here, your favorite NRL fantasy coach, aka the NRL fantasy fanatic, coming at you for round number 16, or I should say just before kickoff of State of Origin number 2, Blues vs Maroons, because I've decided that I'm going to record this episode just before State of Origin so I can release it on Thursday night, which will be now for you guys. That way you can see your favorite fantasy videos on YouTube just before kickoff on Friday, giving you a little bit more time to rehash what we're going to talk about. It's going to be a short, sweet, to the point video. I'm hoping that the Blues take up a big another win and take the series straight off the bat without that much of a hassle. But I imagine with Billy the Kid back, Valentine Holmes on the wing, it's going to be a bit of a... Uh, bit of an upsy turvy game so let's wrap up the last round which was round 15 one of the major buys and we spoke about this for so long we spoke about having good buy coverage and i would say 80 75 percent of people out there had horrible buy uh, coverage because the average points for last round was around the 500 mark which is not great even considering that it was an origin round like at the end of the day you've got to be scoring a lot more points than that in order to be competitive because you're going to find that someone else out there is actually buy planning if you're not. Not to worry because we still have three more buys to go, which is this round, round 16, which is a minor buy, round 19, another minor buy, and round 18, which is the third major buy round with the State of Origin players. So how did I go last round? 81st, round 15, right? That was huge. We had a lot of things go good for us. A lot of things didn't go that great, but a lot of things did go well for us. Let's have a look at my team from the last round, how it happened, why it happened. So Cameron McInnes, our hooker, 46 points. Bit of an average score, below his average, well, you know, his 56 average, which wasn't bad. Case of Pritchard, not a great result, so our hookers did not deliver for us. Case of Pritchard ended up getting injured, and he's going to be out for the rest of the season, which means we're going to have to trade him out this round going forward. It's a bit of a disadvantage holding on to him. Not to mention the last couple of rounds, he's had a couple of knocks to the head and HIAs, which meant all the money he made in the last couple of weeks, like the extra 40, 50 grand, immediately shot back down to that 300,000 mark, which isn't a bad thing because, I mean, at the end of the day, he still made 119k overall for us. And the fact of the matter is this, is that uh, we do a lot of buy planning and you should always do buy planning. Sometimes things aren't going to work your way and that's one of those things that didn't happen for us. Nathan Brown... 51 points, outstanding result for us. Now, well, what's going to happen with Case of Pritchard being out for the rest of the season? Can we consider Nathan Brown coming into the hooker role? I don't know. It's anyone's call at the moment. We're going to have to wait for the following team list Tuesday to see how they're going to respond to that. I imagine you know, Cameron King might come into play. Uh, Kenny Edwards might be shifted to hooker. We tried that last year against the Roosters, and it was, you know... It, Kenny Woods isn't a hooker. He's a second row. He's a great second row, but hooking's not his thing. So maybe Nathan Brown might go hooker because every time Case Pritchard seems to go off the off the floor, Nathan Brown seems to take up those extra minutes. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Paul Vaughan, absolutely amazing. 77 points. We've been saying this for a long time. You know, you should have him. If you don't have him, grab him. Yes, you've missed the boat, but still good value. Bam. Other players, who else played? Angus Crichton. So I did the vice-captain loophole, and we discussed this back in round number 12, I think. So if you're unsure how the vice-captain loophole works, basically, if you have 17 or less players playing, you put the vice-captain on one of your players, you put the captain on the other player. If your vice-captain scores excessively well, you simply just move them off, and then you move off your captain, and therefore you get your, cap your vice-captain score doubled, which he did 121 points, which was... Wow, I couldn't believe it. Now, I forgot to move Sammy Burgess from my starting uh, lineup onto the bench, so I didn't have him as a reserve or playing. Unfortunately, I just missed the team list uh, release one hour before the game when he got cold, uh, simply because I was doing a bit of laser tag, which is unfortunate. Britt didn't do that great of a job for us. Got 11. Now, he was more of a cash out. I'm just glad we got the extra 11 points. Jack DeBell in 55 was our captain. Moved him out. Uh, Jason Tomalolo, 80, great score. Uh, Paul Gallon, 60, great score. Cameron Munster, 62. We've been talking about this for so long. Like, if you do not have Cameron Munster, get him. He's probably going to be one of the best wing, uh, wing fullbacks slash halves that you can have. And the fact that he's got that versatility with playing for Melbourne. If you don't have him, I don't know why. 2,000 of you guys must have watched this video last time because you've ended up buying him. As a result, well, you've picked up that he's done a great job for us. Cody Walker, 51. Ben Hampton, disappointing, you know. He got 34 minutes, only scored nine. 
Curtis Scott was a huge surprise. Now, we spoke about this last round. I was picking him up as a cash out, but also someone who's probably going to play the major buyers just for a little bit of extra coverage. And sometimes those guys who don't usually get the spotlight go big because they're against other teams that are depleted. And that was the result. 54 points. Amazing for a center. Tyrell getting 58. So our centers equaled for over 100 points, which is... Wow. Semi, 27. A little bit disappointing. Burnsy, 41. Great to see him pulled in last minute. Did the job for us. Couldn't be more happier. But what does that mean? Like, what are we looking at now? So... Again, you still need to have great buy coverage. As you can see, I've jumped from rank 3,000th something to 1,533rd because I got 81th overall in that last round or a total of 938 points, which is a good round for anyone. It was on the back of, of course, the fact that Angus Crichton did double on 121 points and I wouldn't have been the only one who got double the points. Angus Crichton is starting to get into the threshold of being a captain permanently. He's starting to push for his own rule. Like, rule number one is Cameron Smith. You know, always by Smith. I don't have him. Rule number two, Angus Crichton. And we spoke about this back in, actually, round number nine. I said, get him. He's on the front cover of my video. So Angus Crichton must have. And he's done the good deed for us. The one time we did captain him, the first time he got 29, which is disappointing. And then ever since then, he scored big. So I think moving forward, when he plays, he might be my captain more often than not. So... What are my trades? I've already brought in Nathan Cleary, and uh, this is why. I've got nine trades left. I had nine trades left, after, but now I've got eight after making Cleary. What did I do? I brought in Cleary. I bumped Hampton up to hooker, to my spare hooker, and I brought in Cleary in my halves. And the way I'm doing this is, I need guns who are going to be playing the next major buyers and the, and the potential buyers, 16, 18, 19, like we said. Any points that a gun isn't scoring there that uh, is another gun that's going to be scoring for someone else. So if you're not part of it, you're losing out. So players or teams, more or less, who you should start looking at buying more of or less of of their guns is Manly, because they already had the first two major buyers, round 12, 15, they won't have another buyer. And also the Panthers. Newcastle as well, but debatably, who you, are you going to buy from Newcastle? I'm not too sure. Mm. So, players that you can buy front, second row, is Martin Tapau. In fact, I would love to have Tapau on my team, but to bring in Tapau, I've actually got to trade out a gun, and I don't want to trade out a gun for absolutely no reason when I've got limited trades. Remember, you don't just want to be trading guns to guns, because if that gun gets injured, or another gun gets injured... You're going to be making another trade. And if you keep trading like that, you're not going to have trades. If anyone gets injured, that's going to screw you over. But Martin Tapao has been absolutely amazing in his role. I would be looking to pick him up if you're looking to bring someone in. Uh, Nathan Cleary. Look, the other option there is Daily Cherry Evans. And I looked more closely at their stats. And what I found was that Nathan Cleary's stats were more of an indication of being an attacking half rather than Daily Cherry Evans. In saying that, I like Nathan Cleary as well because he's the goal kicker. And goal kickers are usually good for another standard sub of points, especially Penrith, because they usually have those big games. They have those up and down games where one day they can score 10 points, or have two conversions or a penalty. Another day they can score 30 points. So then Nathan Cleary could have an additional six kicks at goal, which is 12 points, without having to do anything. I just think he's a well-rounded player. I know that he has a lot of missed tackles per game. In fact, I think the last game in round 14, he had nine missed tackles, which is a big no-no, but that was more of the abnormal result. And halves are generally smaller anyway. You find that the most penetrated missed tackle position is your halves. Um, Paramount Eels is um, Moses. You've got even one of the best players, Maloney, at halves. You know, he's playing for the Origin team. Uh, Cherry Evans, you know, you, you've got all those guys who are going to be missing tackles. That's just their position. They're, they're small, they're playmakers. It's kind of like baseball where you've got your pitcher who's going to bat. Usually they don't bat that well if they have to because they're used to, you know, not training in that area. So there's a lot of different ways you can do things. Try to minimize the amount of trades you can make. Try to make sure you've got 17 players playing for every round, if not at least 15, 16. 
make use of the captain's vice captain's loophole for this week what am i going to do who's playing and where are they playing so i would like to captain and vice captain either of these two so tom Alolo is going to be my vice captain if he's playing first yeah there he is he's he's playing first so i vice captain him and captain gallon tom Alolo doesn't score say 60 i'm gonna um if if he doesn't score 60 i'm gonna leave gallon there if he does end up scoring 60 more I'll move Gallon and trade him in for someone who's not playing, like a Brit or a Burgess or a Crichton. And I'll pick up the auto emergency anyway because I don't have the sufficient amount of players playing at the moment. Um, there's a uh, there's a lot of different ways you can look at it. One thing I was potentially looking at was bringing in Mitch Rain in my hooker role. Great pod. Cheap. Well, not cheap, actually. He's actually around the 400 high mark, I believe, from memory. Yeah, there he is. I, I think he's a very good point-scoring hooker. Like, he might not be as flash on the field as some of these other guys, but he does a lot in the fantasy area that you need. He's like a Smith, but he's not a Smith. He would play the major buy rounds, or all the rest of the buy rounds, but Peter Wallace is due back two to four weeks, which means Mitch Rain could be out of a job and you're making another trade. So you're better off putting someone up there for now to play this next round and wait for Cameron Smith to be available after round 19. Pick him up. Hopefully he's gone down a little bit more in value. I can't imagine that he's going to drop too much because look at him, he's just a scoring machine. Depends. I might even pick him up this round. It just, it, it, it really depends upon two things at the moment. Does Smith come off injured from this round? Will he actually play? Because we noticed from the last round, the last soft buy round, the soft buy round being straight after Origin, he didn't play. So the big talking point there is, is it worth bringing him in? Evaluate it based on where you, where you're at at that point of time and if it's feasible because he's the most expensive player. For me, I could bring him in because I've got the cash to do it. That's why you do a lot of down trades now. You, now to, you need to start down trading players who aren't going to be playing for your team. I did end up holding on Shoni Mataudio and it's kind of worked in my favor because he will play all the, major, all the buys moving forward, which is great. The other options I have is because I've got so many half wing, dual position half hookers, I can move another half in. I could move Smith in, move Hampton back down, knock Munster down to fullback, put Jared Hayne into centre, trade out any of those three, or even bump out a second row because I've got second row centres in there, dual position players in there as well. There's a lot of things I'm thinking of at the moment. That's my main train of thought. I want to bring Nathan Cleary in. I also want to bring Dylan Edwards in because he's an absolutely amazing player for his age, but also for fantasy. I think he's going to be a must-have buy. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking to myself at the end of the day, and look, a thousand people have purchased him. Negative break-even, which means he's definitely going to go up in value. He's the cheapest he's going to be all season. And with um, Thierry... Martin being pushed to the Cowboys, it looks like he's got his spot. Moylan definitely at a halves. Dylan Edwards to hold his spot. I could bring him in for Semi because Semi's not going to be playing around 16, 19. I made about 50k off Semi and he did, he did a good job for me during that time. But I think Dylan Edwards as a fullback might be a little bit more consistent than Semi given the fact that the way Moylan and Cleary play in the halves and they bring their fullback in as an attacking fullback like Billy Slater to the Melbourne Storm. So there's a lot of good things happening for my team right now and I'm just trying to look at bringing in certain players in. Like I definitely want to bring in Martin to power but there's just no room. Anything is a, is a trade to a trade. I'm potentially thinking James Graham because he just seems to be disappointing this season. And... He's he's consistently disappointing. I mean, you look at all the scores. How many scores above 60? He's got two out of 60. And it doesn't look like he's going to be playing those big minute rounds like he did at, at the every odd game that he did last season. If you tracked his minutes last season, there might be an injury or two, and then he'd come in and he'd play you know much greater minutes, which means as someone who's a forward would score more points, tackles, runs, etc. So... I, I'm considering it, but it might not be the right thing to do. And Martin Tapao is the most expensive he's going to be. I could bring him in and he could flop. I mean, 
He's the strongest player in the NRL at the moment. He's definitely going to be making tackle bust. He's a point scoring machine. I want him, but I can't buy him. It's so hard because I remember last season I brought in Aiden Tolman thinking he'd be playing more minutes than James Graham potentially. And then I got sucker punched because Graham ended up playing more and Tolman played less. And that's the risk that sometimes you've got to evaluate. We're getting to the point of the season where I'm not... I'm, you know, I really like my rank. You know, we're in the top 2% of all fantasy coaches out there. But the problem at the moment is that you want to do better than that. And the only way to do better than that is to grab pods that other people aren't going to be utilizing. So I'm considering making those trades. Let's have a look. He's only got 8% of owners. That's not a lot of people. Compared to James Graham, that's 20%. So if you brought in Martin Tapao, you're doing better than the potentially 12% or more coaches out there, at least as a minimum. So, you know, it's, it's a lot to consider. I also want to make sure I bring in one more player so I fill 17 rolls in. I'm hoping uh, Brit comes in last minute and he gets shifted in. That would be absolutely amazing if he did. Because you've got to think about it this way. 9, 10, 11 points. Yeah, it sucks. But 9, 10, 11 points is better than not having those 9, 10, 11 points. So, you know, consider where you're at, guys. Have a look at the trades you want to make make them and then try to look back at them maybe an hour later and be like is that the best trade i can make this is a short sweet episode from spot the aussie thanks so much for liking the video i've really enjoyed making these videos next week will be a lot more in depth uh at least a lot more in time depth and we'll have a look at where i'm at and what what trades i've actually made because it's the first week where i'm kind of like umming and ahhing i'm i'm tossing up ideas but i'm not really certain so expect some last minute changes and remember that Changes can come as a result of origin, like Jared Hank will get injured, and then I'm out another fullback, and then I'm in trouble. But uh, we'll see how we go. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I'll check you guys out next time. Be sure to subscribe, like the video, and I'll check you guys out shortly.